so in web gis basically how do you share this information once you are collecting the information you are processing it you are analyzing it and finally you are creating a map out of it okay a beautiful map you have created which everyone can read but how do you actually share it to your clients or maybe share it to someone okay in that prospect web gis comes into the picture so if you are working as a web gis expert you will be working on to only the processing of the data or maybe the development of the data or maybe development of a information system or a portal where you would be uh, requiring to uh, showcase the data onto a portal okay and other person he would be onto the data part other one more one more person he would be collecting the data another person he would be analyzing the data and you would be maybe uh, showcasing the data so there are many gis persons who are actually who are actually entitled to do this job so it's a, not a job of a single single person obviously he cannot go into the field as well he cannot process the data he cannot showcase the data as well it's a teams work right so for web gis the tools which are being used as i already mentioned some servers are there okay map server geo server then for developers who want to actually work with the development only in future because it's all about the data right now the thing which is being practiced whether you are a computer engineer whether whether you are a mechanical engineer or civil engineer it's all about the automation right now okay it's all about automation in the future future or coming years as well it's not like that uh, i'm a civil engineer and i'm a, i'm an architect i'm an urban planner i would not work with automation okay somewhere or sometime in your career in your professional life you'll have to do some sort of automation you'll have to deal maybe if you're not doing it you have you'll have to deal with some sort of automation so for automation who does that the developers do that so it is also essential that you should be knowing some sort of uh, languages which can be html css javascript python i've not written one more language which is r okay php c sharp dot net don't get very much frightened after seeing this uh, all of them are based on different different applications so if your interest is in data science partial data science maybe you would you would go with the python or with r or if your uh, interest lies with the development front end development maybe you will go with javascript or html css if you want to work with the back end server maybe you will go with the php if you want to develop some uh, applications maybe you would go with c sharp dot net so for different applications different languages are there but it is not necessary that you should learn it but if it if you are learning it it is much more obviously uh, practical and beneficial for you guys uh, for visualization google earth is there uh, google maps then virtual earth street map and many such software data science software are also there like power bi then then table is there okay these are only used for the visualization now for uh processing the data as i already mentioned some softwares were there qgis arcmap no some libraries are also there so if you are using a language uh, let's say python you would be requiring to use the geo geo pandas uh, library shapely rasterio okay mapping libraries are also there for uh, front end development you guys must be very much confused that what, what it is all about it is all about languages no but it is not about languages as i already mentioned uh it is team work so different different persons are assigned for different work so it depends on your interest whether you want to become an analyst a consultant so these are the fields which uh, are being utilized or maybe uh, which are being practiced nowadays if you are learning a gs and if you are a civil engineer or if you are a computer science engineer if you are an environmental science engineer and along said if you are learning the gis what career aspect can be there for you gis engineer gs analyst and gs developer these are three things which are being practiced most gs analyst engineer development and consultant so if you if you are looking that you should be into the data science then you can be a gs developer if you looking you should only pre process the vector data and raster data and you can analyze some sort of information and you can create some sort of map map out of it you can become a gs engineer and analyst and if you want to work with a company who is working in two multiple domains and who is who is working into the civil engineering projects as well they are working with the urban planning schemes as well they are working with some some sort of logistic information like uber 
or maybe Ola they are working with and they want your information, they want your inputs. So you can become a GS a consultant as well. So it's a multi-dimensional field. It's being practiced each and everywhere. Okay, it's being highly practiced in army. Like your uh, simple example is surgical strike. The planning of the surgical strike, the satellite imagery, the drone survey, everything is data which is being gathered and then being processed, then being generated some sort of heat maps that where the launch pads are located, where the some sort of uh, TNT is hideout. Okay, so these are some applications which are being practiced by the by the army agencies like DRDU is there. Okay, DTRL is there. So they also do very extensively. They are using the geospatial technologies. Okay, you can also work from them for them. So finally. Uh, we would be looking at a concept very briefly, very fast. That uh, concept is basics of remote sensing. So as I already mentioned you, what is GIS? The components of GIS, data formats and everything. Uh, lastly, we would be looking at what is basically remote sensing. So remote sensing, so what does that mean? From the name only, everything is, I think, self-taught, remote. What does what does the remote mean? Can anyone answer if what is remote? Don't go into technicalities, okay? Just whatever, even if it is a silly answer, just answer. What is the remote? Distant input device. Yes, you both are correct. Far away from location, secure location. Very good. Operating device, yes, it can be because you're using your remote for your AC, for your TV, everything. So basically remote is nothing, but anywhere from where uh, we are not into the, um, physical contact of a person or maybe a surface or maybe anything. If we are not into the physical contact of anything and we are still operating it and if we are still looking at it, that is remote. And if you are sensing it, like you are operating with your remote to your AC, you are setting the temperature. So you are remote, you are doing remote sensing, right? Okay. You are looking from, uh, from your, you are sitting in a flight and you are looking at uh, clouds. So those clouds you are sensing from your eyes. So you are remotely sensing. Likewise, in geospatial technology, in geospatial technology, remote is, remote sensing is capturing the images, capturing the information with the help of uh, satellite with the help of sensors, drone, UAV surveys, airplane surveys, anything, or maybe a LIDAR, which is now being practiced in the iPhone 12. iPhone 12, uh, which has been recently launched in the iPhone 12 Pro, to be precise, there's a LIDAR sensor. That LIDAR sensor is nothing but a light image detection and ranging technology. Okay, what it does, it remotely sends your information about your maybe sofa, your bed, and then you can uh, artificially or maybe you can, virtual reality, in virtual reality, you can place it anywhere else, maybe in your other room, and then you can see whether it is good or not, whether it is looking nice or not. Okay, so that is a remote sensing. So now each and every company or each and every organization is practicing geospatial technology somewhere or the other. Okay, so acquiring the data remotely from a distance location. So to take an example of a satellite, satellite is th thousands of kilometer above in the sky, starting from hundreds of kilometers, it's still thousands of kilometers above in the sky. I would not go very deep into what is a satellite, what sort of satellites are there, what all sensors are there, but it is there, okay, you all know, right? So they are actually sensing the data, what data? It is for different, different purpose. So that is known as remote sensing. Now, how does it work? Let's look into the next slide. Uh, so if you can see in this image, uh, there is satellite up there. Uh, yeah, this is satellite. Now a satellite is recording the information with the help of what? Sun. So sun is a source of energy. Okay. Sun is the ultimate source of energy we, we all know. So sun is uh, giving us energy, that is rays, sun rays, right? That is a, a sort of energy only. 
Now this energy is having an ele electromagnetic spectrum into it, uh, electromagnetic energy into it. So there are UV rays, gamma rays, X rays, okay, uh, and then visible rays. Many rays are there. Okay, so only the visible rays is what we can actually a human eye can understand or can see. Okay, so that electro electromagnetic rays. Every feature on the earth, whether it is a house, whether it is a road, whether it is soil, grass, that means vegetation, water, forest, everything is capturing the, that energy. Okay. We humans cannot see it, but they are actually capturing, they are absorbing and then they are reflecting as well. So once they're absorbing and some sort of energy, they're also reflecting. So those sensors who are very high up in the sky. They're actually based on their uh, values, based on each uh, entity values. Some values would be there. Uh, reflectance value, you can say. Okay, it is reflecting some sort of information, right? It is absorbing, then it is reflecting. So that sensor is capturing every sort of information, every sort of reflectance value from from the from which it is coming. Then it would send onto a uh, transmission server. Okay, which uh, is situated maybe somewhere in India, it is situated in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so each and every uh, satellite which is up in the sky, and if it is made by ISRO, its weather station, its transmission station is in Hyderabad. I forgot the particular city it is, uh, but it is there. Okay, so they are actually collecting the data, and with the help of the data, you get the satellite imagery and then you can download that satellite imagery maybe from ISRO's website, from NASA's website and many other open source websites are there. Okay. So this is the basic process of remote sensing. Okay. Now they are reflecting some sort of values. Now water will give you some other sort of values. A tree canopy will give you some other sort of values. A grass, a road, a house will give you some other sort of values. Now based on those values, you would be able to identify that whether it is a vegetation, whether it is a road, whether it is a wetland, it's a water body or wasteland, fallow land or urban area, that means uh, built up area, right? Based on the reflectance value, a satellite would be able to assess. And based on that, you can also do some, some sort of analysis, like I already mentioned. Okay, like maybe temporal analysis. Temporal analysis means if you want to calculate the built up area in 2010, the built up area was this much as per the satellite imagery. And in 2021, the built up area is this much. So this, this city has grown in this direction or this city has grown in su su such sort of area or likewise. Okay. This is not as simple as it is looking like it requires a lot of pre-processing and processing. That's why you are an engineer. Okay. To collect the data, to process it and then to analyze it and then to make maps out of it. And which would be useful for the local bodies, for your uh, urban bodies, PWD, irrigation department. Okay. So all of this department collects this information from the remote sensing departments or some private companies which are doing such sort of work. Okay. So what it uh, actually, uh, what components are involved into it? That is energy source or, or illumination, which is sun. Then radiation and the atmosphere, that is electromagnetic spectrum interaction with the with the target that can be anything and then re-emitting of that energy to the satellite and then collection of that satellite into the ground uh, ground station and then interpretation application and analysis right so what is an electromagnetic radiation just to brief you out it's a it's a sun rays which are coming towards us we say that uh, UV rays are there, it would harm your skin. Okay, not only UV rays are there, many such waves are there. So it is a complete electromagnetic spectrum which is coming to you, but a human surface or a human eye cannot record it. Okay, and it is also some sort of rays are uh, useful for us, some sort of rays are harmful for us. Uh, so according to that, uh, they actually travel from the space and then they come in contact with you. So I would explain you very you know, briefly, like this is electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Uh, electromagnetic spectrum has some sort of value starting from this. It's a light basically. So light 
travels in a vacuum or it can travel in a medium okay so light which is traveling is in a form of a spectrum okay and that spectrum is known as electromagnetic spectrum in that spectrum the visible rays which you are seeing which we say the wave gear okay the rainbow which you are seeing that is the formed with the help of visible rays maybe some other colors were also there in this in the in the rainbow you, which you might have not noticed how you will notice because your eyes is not um, meant to do that okay a human eye can only see the visible rays okay so such sort of rays x rays uh, gamma rays uv rays microwave rays fm rays am rays long wave radio waves are there so keeping aside the visible rays the electromagnetic spectrum has different sort of rays as well which are used in the application of remote sensing okay so like microwave rays are used to to identify the moisture content in the soil so there can be a sensor up in the sky which is actually absorbing the microwave data from the surface of the soil and then what it will give you it will give you the soil estimation uh, moisture estimation of the soil this is just an application don't don't get confused okay so such sort of applications are there like i explained to you that i have done the mineral mapping likewise nowadays satellites are also there which are doing the lunar mapping that means moon mapping so people are identifying which sort of what sort of minerals are there on the surface of the moon that is also a, a part of the remote sensing so we are not only doing the remote sensing of our, of our own we are also looking towards our neighbor because that's what we are interested in okay everyone is speaking into their neighbor's home so that's why we are also focusing on different uh, other uh, i would say planets and satellites so earth is a natural satellite uh, moon is a natural satellite of earth okay so we are also planning to uh, send our expedition there what sort of uh, mineral is there what sort of surface it is so if we are doing it for um, moon then just imagine that what sort of applications would be there for earth and we only see earth uh, that it is very nice looking up in the sky uh, the sky is clear the stars are shining but if, actually if you look the earth from the space it is a traffic jammed sort of scenario why because many sort of satellites are there many satellites even the debris which are not right now functional those satellite which are not functional they are they are also revolving around the earth so it's, a, it's sort of a traffic jam situation there but they don't collide with each other because they are rotating in their uh, orbit okay will not go too much into the deep okay so using this rays of different wavelengths it can be shorter near scientists have found out many valuable information which are spectral signature as i already mentioned you soil moisture estimation mineral mapping aerosols in the atmosphere like pollution okay how do you find how much pollution is there with the satellite data of course not only the satellite data but there are some sort of uh, equipments are also there ground equipments are also there which also me measure the pollution but it will be only for a small area of course to map the pollution of complete india it would be very difficult that's why we use the satellite information like uh, in the after the diwali we actually in a very we are very interested how much pollution has increased in delhi okay how do we do it with the help of some sort of earth observing satellites okay based on their applications we cannot do it with the device or maybe a weather station or the ground station of course we do it with the satellite data only so certain organization or countries have developed their um, um organizations or you can say space agencies like india has got isro us has got nasa um, europe has got esa european space agency for working on to that on on this technology which is known as geospatial technology and we are only the users of it they are actually the developer of these technologies they are actually the ones who are deploying the satellite into the space and then they particularly send this information to all of us and we actually procure it from them from many portals now how you, you would be actually wondering how do you record this uh, how do you procure this data how do you procure this satellite imagery well 
NASA's uh, portal is there. You can say USGS. Okay, you can just Google it. ISRO Bowen is there. BHU WAN. Okay, so such portals are there where you can get those satellite imageries. Okay, electromagnetic radiation, as I already explained. Okay, these are some reflectance values, high reflectance values, low reflectance values based on the spectral values which sensor is recording. It gives you some sort of information. Uh, so some sort of uh, some successful Indian satellite and their applications. Recently, it has been launched IRNSS. This is Indian navigational satellite. Earlier, we were dependent on U uh, USA's GPS. Okay, right now we have launched our own IRNSS. I think one of the mobile from um, Realme is using this uh, satellite information system. Maybe Realme or maybe some other companies using. But in the coming years, every phone, every handset device would be using this technology, which is indigenous, Indian made. Inset and Gset, these are communication satellite for your mobile phones, for your uh, television data. Okay, television data means Tata Sky, which is being used. Reset, Cartosat, IRS, Ocean Set, these are Earth observation satellite. Okay, Earth surface as well as the Water bodies like ocean. These are some, these are some satellites. This is one meteorological satellite. The name is Kalpana, and it is named after the famous scientist as well as um, space explorer astronaut Kalpana Chawla. This is the weather satellite, which will give you the wind directions, precipitation values, aerosols in the atmosphere, and along according to that, how much rain it would be. Okay. SkyMet, I think you might have heard the name about SkyMet. SkyMet uses the meteorological satellite data and then it actually predicts that how much rainfall it is going to be. It cannot be always accurate, but they are par accurate. Okay, Google weather satellite systems are there. Uh, then weather, then um, different different agencies are there. Right now that uh, cyclone came, Taute. So many researchers and many, many scientists uh, Explore that what would be its way using what metallurgical satellites, Chandrayaan lunar research satellite. It is okay. So I'm done with my presentations.